Okay guys, 25 Mbit, 25 milliwatt. this way we see the deck radiation signal the fastest. First flight with the DJI stock on the goggles and DJI stock on the copter. And this time I try to fly higher to avoid the Fresnel zone or something blocking my sight. I also opted not to have the waypoint this time because I just don't like the way the GPS flies. But I will record the GPS locks on the black box so we will know exactly how far we've gone. And yeah, I will turn around when I chicken out, which is too soon probably. But yeah. And I will always head into the region of the mountains. And I'm already pretty far with just the stock containers on. Yeah, but oh, I see five Mbits, four. I'm prepared to GPS return home. So I'm over the railway station. Four Mbit, three. Two, three. Ah, that's too much for me. I wouldn't feel comfortable flying without GPS and the picture is that jumpy. So, yeah. Tailwind now when I'm coming back, which is a really good thing to have. <laughs> the other way around, it's quite shitty, so you don't want this. Great! So that's like the direction that I fly to and you see of course there are some trees and this is a, a big block for line of sight flying. So if I fly all the way there and then over those trees heading to this mountain that's kind of blocked here now, I have to always increase my altitude to stay above this tree line. I see it on the GPS tracks if I messed up but I think I did a good job this time at flying high enough. Okay. Second flight. Same battery. Now with the three turn helicals. And the same antennas on the copter, being the stock DJI antennas. Our left hand trying to fly high enough, heading off in the same direction, directly pointing my goggles there, which is important with the directional antennas, of course, and keeping an eye on the megabits. So the Signal indicator is already red and blinking. Megabits go to 21, 20 already here. Twenty-three. So fly right above the altitude of the Eichberg Kogel on the left over the railway station. This is where I had half of the bit rate with the stock antennas, I'd say. So we have 15, which is pretty much 13 megabits. It's a bit shaky. 11, 10, 8, 12, 13. Try to fly a bit higher, yeah. It's already some nice distance. It's kind of stuck at 13, 14, 15, it goes up now. <laughs> Amazing. 
feel like I'm drifting a bit to the right and I feel very nervous. Oh shit. So the equality is 100. Crossfire has no problem this time. 10. Ah oh, shit. I really want to turn around. Angle mode. Going to angle mode. That's really shitty far. Okay, so I'm turning around, the signal gets, no, the signal gets ugly here. <sighs> yeah, sorry. That's like easy two or three kilometers. And I don't have more guts now. <laughs> but it's, yeah. So I, I think it's safe to say that I didn't reach the range limit here. Which again makes this a shitty test. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. I don't know my battery status. And I really want to come home safe. But this. Yeah. You saw like the really nice additional gain that you get with the directionals. I do have much more. Battery time though, I set the timer for 8 minutes and I can easily fly 10 or 15 minutes. Let's fly over the trees a bit. And keep in mind that's all on freaking 25 milliwatts. Which, come on, be honest guys, nobody flies 25 milliwatts. Except for me, of course. But the amount of freedom yeah, let's make an additional test here. So you know that I point my goggles in this direction. And now I will, f I stand right in the middle of the screen now, by the trees. So I'm, I think I'm almost 90 degrees now away from the cone of reception. And let's just see how far we can go up there. Which is also amazing. I know for a reference that this green area here before the tunnel is 800 meters away. 800 meters on the side of my reception. Now signal is dropping. Now I'm prepared to turn around my head but yeah. So you can go like really far on the sides of the reception cone and that's the advantage of the three turn helicals rather than the higher gain antennas. You can almost fly like those were Omnis. Now, now I'm for sure 90 degrees on the side, on the left side of myself. Going behind myself soon. And behind is also trees. Behind me is also trees soon. So yeah. Didn't wouldn't want to go far behind myself. And now I want to see how the batteries fare. But it's actually really relaxing to long range fly the sky stars. Oh. Because I still have 25 Mbits now. But again, the signal indicator is at one bar, blinking red, making you nervous. Forget it. When in real life I have still good bitrate. 
So I'm down at 15 Mbits before the railway station. 9 Mbits. I think something's off with the 7 turns. 8, 7. Maybe the vibrations do not go to the antennas. It's 15, 16, but that was no, no problem with the Fresnel zone. Weird. So bitrate climbed up. 15, 13, 13, oh man, I'm so nervous, 11, 12, this time I really want to push the range to prove those long horns are worth it. 11. Uh, it's shaky. We have winds. 9, 8. Ah, oh, that's range. I'm afraid that I have to fly all the way over to the mountains with these antennas. 10, 8, man, let me do a quick pan around without panicking. Yeah, I see I still have line of sight. I'm also pretty high up. I know why I'm not a long-range pilot. It's really ugly for your nerves. Three, six, three. No, okay. That is again. It's not the end of the range, but it's my my tolerance of range anxiety <laughs> is reached, and this is easily like three or four kilometers. Okay, so the way back is way more relaxing. <laughs> Here's your comparison of the charts. I only show you the way until I turn around and you see the meters that I got with the different antennas. It's nice to see that the helicals get you around double the range, but already the, the really small helicals, the three turn. And I didn't max out the range either on the three turn nor on the seven turns because I was just afraid of the range or of, of flying so far out. Beautiful autumn scenery only to be captured by DVR. And soon I will reach the 90 degree side. Yeah, and I see megabits dropping there a bit. So now I'm for sure at 90 degree. <gasps> what is up? Okay, something. I think I lost the prop. That's not nice. I need to get into the car. Okay, rescue mission starting. Whenever I get into my car for a rescue mission, you know that I'm fucked. <laughs> but I think I might be lucky enough to have emergency landed on a green field so it had nothing to do with video range of course neither with crossfire range so I have my little tag on the app so within 60 meters I should find it but yeah <sighs> ah, I got the telemetry back that's nice because in the car you have lower range and I think it should be up there, shit, up there. 
in the range of the cows. <laughs> that will be interesting. <sighs> Shit. I see image and I see the barn, which is this barn, so it should be there, sitting low in the greens somewhere. Try to get in there, being prepared to run from the cows. The cow is already looking. At some point in time I should see myself on the on the screen. There it is. It's good. I see one, two, three, I see four props. Almost no damage. Cows stay away from me. That maybe was an ugly crash in terms of I don't know why. But the best possible. Yeah, stop staring at me, cow. <laughs> Like in the best possible, almost best possible, minus the cows, a good place to crash land. Since I found all the four props, three were undislocated more or less, but they were directly next to the copter, so it's not the case that one of those props fell off mid-air. It's rather the case that one of those motors maybe burned. And I started to like how this thing flies. Now let this be my test flight with the same battery hovering in GPS mode. Kinda thinking about flying long range again with this unreliable thing. But I really want to test the Maple Wireless antennas properly. And sorry, right the second I, before I stopped recording, this thing just fell out of the air. So there I have my answer. I shall not fly this long range with the other antennas. Sorry Chinese Maple Wireless. <laughs> I really wanted to test it today. But this thing is not reliable. No motor is really hot. But it just did a disarm in mid-air. Like two minutes into my hovering it just and I I could bite my ass that I stopped recording on the phone because yeah like five seconds after stopping recording it I now don't have the confidence to fly out like two three or four kilometers with this setup and go search it somewhere so I'm really sorry for Maple Wireless that I couldn't test this better today or I I didn't reach the point where I mount their antennas to my test setup so I had the stock antennas the three and the seven turn helicals. The seven turn helicals, this one here, <laughs> the, the Longhorns, uh, they had, on the first attempt, they had weird issues. It was maybe because of the MMCX antenna plug was a bit out. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you have at least seen how good the helicals uh, work in comparison to the standard antennas. And Still, the three-turn helical is my recommendation. I like them a lot and I will probably use them as a standard antenna if I want to fly a bit further. The other standard antennas that I will just use are the Trussy Stubbies because they are so damn convenient. Thanks my Patreons, they make this possible without mid-roll ads. <laughs> Hello Bruce. Thanks you for watching and for commenting. Let me know what's going on in your quad life in the comments. Until this, see you next time. Bye for now.